Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks fell short in Game 7. I thought they'd get it done. I put my money on Luka. It's tough. That's all I can say. But regardless of the outcome, the Dallas Mavericks, they need to make significant changes this offseason to their roster. Chris Tasporzingis, 16-11 on 6-12 shooting. I thought he played pretty solid, but when you're the second option on a max contract, playing with Luka, you can't be putting up those type of numbers. They, they need to go out and try to get an upgrade. Uh, I made a video talking about John Wall. I'm not the biggest John Wall fan by any means, but at least John Wall can defend at a high level, can play make, can run in transition, 37% career catch and shoot player. I mean, Jalen Brunson played 10 minutes, Trey Burke played eight. Why is that? Because they don't play any defense. They're just there to score, but John Wall doesn't score. He's about an 18 and seven guy this season for the Houston Rockets. Remember, he was doing this while playing with a Rockets roster that wasn't good. He's playing with a, a roster, obviously a 17 Rocket win uh, team. So uh, looking at his stats, he wouldn't be that stand out. Like it wouldn't stand out that much to you by any means. But just again, if you're playing with Luca, you're playing with Ricarla, who's a veteran coach. He's obviously is a champion. He's won a champion with Dirk. I don't know if he was with them the, when they went to Miami, but he's a championship level coach. I, I just think John Wall to the Mavericks should be really good. But we're not really here to talk about that. That's for um, another video. If you guys want to go check that out, I can leave it in the description. But mainly, I will say that. Luka Doncic, this series, despite the loss, showed to me that he's really up next. He's He might already be the best player in the NBA. I mean, I don't see anyone else that would have been able to take this Mavericks team to seven games and won it. I don't, LeBron couldn't have done it. Harden, I don't even know if he could have done it. Durant, I mean, Luka, this roster is not good by any means. It's just if Tim Hardaway Jr. doesn't have that five of nine, six of nine, three-point shooting game. Finney Smith was four of seven. He played well. He had 18 and 10. I mean, Dorian Finney Smith outplayed Porzingis tonight. Think about that. Boban, 14 and 10. But again, Boban, he's just there to dunk. I mean, honestly, Boban, I mean, the crazy thing is after uh, game five, I made a video talking about how they should start Boban. And uh, I mean, Boban, I like Boban. He's a cool dude. Can rebound, can dunk. But I mean, Boban, the only reason he's in there is because Chris S. Porzingis isn't doing what he's supposed to do. I mean, he was brought in from New York to help win Luka Doncic in this Mavericks team championships. And right now, if it wasn't for Tim Hardaway Jr. in that trade package, it would have been a, a total failure. They still got time. Porzingis about 24, 25 years old, but they've got to get Porzingis out of here. And I'm trying to think of some other teams that would be interested in Porzingis. I'm sure there's some, but do you think anyone would offer more than John Wall in a first round pick? The 23rd or 24th pick in the draft in John Wall. I don't know. I'm sure there's a team out there that believes in Porzingis, but he's seven foot three. Defensively, he's just not the same defender that he was in New York. He's supposed to be there to defend, to rebound, and to knock down the open jump shot. 0 5 from three tonight. Porzingis looked horrible, man. He's also injury prone. He's never there when you need him. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, but Luca had 46, 14, and 7 tonight. I wanted to get up here and make a Luca video talking about how he's advancing to the second round. I mean, what he did was just video game like. And, and Luca, like, he puts up these numbers, and if you didn't watch the games, you might be like, well, these are empty numbers, but they're they're not. I mean, he's he's doing everything. Like every single basket that's scored is either scored or assisted on by Luca. I mean, he's making the case to be the best player. I mean, Luca's he's slightly becoming my favorite player to watch. And again, there's, it's not like I'm trying to like toot my own horn or, or anything. I did make a video saying that Luca by the end of the season would be the best player. He'd be at finish his career as a top 10 player. He wouldn't MVP. I mean, this video right here is probably not even going to get a thousand views. So there's, it's not like I'm making this to try to get 10, 20 K views out of you. Like I, this video is probably not going to even get a thousand views. I got 12, oh, just about 12,000 subs, but I just thought to make it because there's a lot of Luca fans, a lot of Mavericks fans and if I could start a franchise with any player in the league, I would take Luka. I wouldn't think about Giannis, Jokic. Uh, it doesn't matter. Tatum, Lillard, like all these guys. My guy is Luka Doncic. Remember, he's 22. Basically just turned 22. 7-11 from the free throw line, 5-11 from three, 17 of 30 from the field. In the second half, Luka Doncic went cold. I mean, what would have happened if Luka, again, he had 29 at halftime. If Luka had erupted for an even better second half, I don't even know if that would have been enough, maybe, but he had 46 and 14 and 7. 
on efficient splits. I don't think Luka could have played much better in this game. It just came down to Hardaway Jr. didn't shoot the ball well. Chris Porzingis missed five of his threes, all five of the threes that he took. Brunson, two points in 10 minutes. Kleba, nine minutes, didn't score. Trey Burke, eight minutes, didn't score. Josh Richardson and Dwight Powell, they played 11 minutes and scored four points combined, and all four of them were by Powell. So Luka, obviously, we're not going to get crazy and talk about he needs to get out of Dallas because Mark Cuban and Rick Carlisle are as good as it gets. They're going to figure this out. But it's got to start with Chris Porzingis and it's got to end with DeMar DeRozan. I think DeMar DeRozan would be an incredible piece to this Dallas Mavericks team. I think Mike Conley Jr. would be an incredible piece. I, I think I prefer Mike Conley. If you guys can get Mike Conley, start him at the point guard. But why would he leave Utah? All-star this year. Loves it there. So that's probably not realistic. But what is realistic is DeMar DeRozan. Now, DeMar DeRozan, he can play the three and the four. He can play make. I mean, I take him over Porzingis. He's undersized, yes, but he's a much more efficient shooter than Brazingis, which makes no sense because DeMar DeRozan doesn't even shoot the three. It was like under 30%. I think he was like 26% from three. But just his mid-range would be, it would just, it would open up the floor so much more. Teams would now have to focus on DeMar DeRozan. Obviously, he's got a post-up game, is an excellent passer. Defensively, can hold his own. So I think DeMar DeRozan would be an incredible upgrade to this Dallas Mavericks team. Uh, give me a second here, guys. Uh, I have I have a script that I wrote. I'll, I'll read it off. So with Luka Doncic being not just the primary option offensively, but also the primary ball handler and decision maker, it might be a good idea to provide him with a breather every once in a while. Yeah, when Luka came out in that third quarter, it wasn't just when he came out, but when he did come out, I mean, they, they just, the Mavericks team could not score. They couldn't get a stop. They couldn't get a stop even with Luka, but they couldn't score. So they, it, they were, it was like a 22 and two run. I think DeRozan's a great theoretical fit as he can move away from the ball and use his quickness to make hard cuts to the basket as well as handle the ball for extended periods of time. DeRozan this season averaged 21 on 49%, seven assists and four rebounds. He did play small ball power forward, but he has an incredible ball handling ability, speed and overall explosive nature to take advantage of slower players. Now, I don't know if the Mavericks have the salary to sign DeMar DeRozan. I think they do and I would do it. Again, DeMar DeRozan is not my favorite. Like, I'd rather have John Collins on this Mavericks team, but John Collins is a restricted free agent. DeRozan's unrestricted for the second time in his career. I don't think he's coming back to San Antonio. He's going to look to get paid. He's going to look to go to a contender. DeRozan and Luka, that would be good. I just I don't know if that would be ideal exactly. I, I think they can – I mean, well, there's no other options. Like, are they going to trade? I mean, Porzingis, you're not getting – if you trade Porzingis, you're not getting a player better back better – Unless it's John Wall. John Wall is like the one guy. I mean, I don't know what the trades are looking like. The Mavericks just literally lost this game like 10, 10, 15 minutes ago. But I will say that, no disrespect, but I don't think Porzingis is in, ever going to win anything next to Luka. And if it happened, it, it would just strictly be Luka. Luka's going to take the next step, and they need to have the right players around him. Tim Hardaway Jr. is a must to sign back. He, I don't know what he's going to want, but, I mean, DeMar DeRozan, Hardaway, if they can bring those guys in, get some more ball handlers, or, uh, Hardaway Jr. can shoot the ball. That's what he's going to do. I like Tim Hardaway Jr. Depends on the cost, though. I mean, it, let's not get crazy here. I, any Anything over $15 million, I can't do. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what his value is, but Gary Trent Jr., Hardaway should not be making any more. I think he's, I think he's a better player, but I, I just remember guys are going to have to take less money. I know that sucks because you want to provide family. You want to get what you're worth, but at the end of the day, signing these guys to huge contracts, it's just it's not winning basketball. I mean, you already have... Porzingis and, and uh, Luca. I think Luke, Luca's not even on the max contract because he's like 22. I think Luca next year is about to get paid. So you're going to have Luca and Porzingis on these contracts. And now you have DeMar DeRozan who's going to be on a big contract. So, I mean, Tim Arno Jr., hopefully he can. I'm not saying he to sign him for like 10 mil. I mean, give, give him his anything like 15, a little bit lower than that annually is fine. But I think that's where it starts. And they also need to bring in more defense. I mean, this Dallas Mavericks team plays no defense. I think DeRozan being quick and very versatile can help them defensively. John Wall would certainly help them defensively. No that question about that. He's six foot four at the one, can lock down. I mean, any point guard John Wall can defend. I mean, besides maybe like, I mean, even Steph Curry, I mean, Wall's physical and can explode out of the building. I know he's got the injury concerns and things like that, but Mavericks fans, Porzingis for the 24th pick in the draft and John Wall. But John Wall's on a horrible contract, though. Is the, so that I don't know. That not John Wall, but let me let me quickly look up uh Chris Steph. Chris Stapps for Zingas trade packages. Uh, okay. Oh, three perfect landing spots. So um let me look at some Porzingis trade packages, see if there's anything. There's gotta be something better. 
Uh, I mean, obviously, Lamarck Soldiers retired, so we can't talk about that. Vujovic, Evan Fournier, that would have been, oh my god, could you imagine Vujovic and Evan Fournier next to Luka? Rashawn Holmes and Buddy Heald. Rashawn Holmes is going into free agency, so uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, yeah, all these are old. Uh, let me let me look at a few more, and then we'll call it a view. Dude, that freaking fly scared me, dude. Jeez. Okay, bear with me here. Golden State Warriors. Wow. What would they be getting back? Okay, so... Wiggins, Kavon Looney, Jordan Poole, and a 2023 first round pick. Yeah, that's, that's better than the John Wall one. Andrew Wiggins would be really good because he can defend at a high level. Very underrated defender. He's athletic. About a 20 points per game score. Kavon Looney would be a big man that can defend. Jordan Poole. Oh, wow. I'm going to make a video on this actually right after this. Uh, I'm going to hold on, guys. I'm waiting for that. That's an incredible trade, but I'm going to sign out. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Uh, shout out to Luca. Incredible. I love watching Luca play. Might have to get a Luca jersey. Peace, guys. Later.